In order for us to import images, we can either import single image to Kvent or we can use kiwi.atlas to merge all our images into one unified image. That saves us a huge amount of space and time. This is the Kiwi document on Atlas. To make an Atlas file, make sure all your PNG images are in one folder. And in that folder, open command prompt and run the highlighted command. Make sure one image file gets created. If you get more than one image file, then you need to increase the size of Atlas image. Let's say 1000 by 1000 or more. Once we have made our Atlas file, we need to import it to Kement. First, we need to import the texture manager from Kement underscore core dot managers module and then load our Atlas file using texture underscore manager dot load Atlas. that is pointing to self.gameworld.init underscore entity. This variable init underscore entity takes two arguments. Dictionary for the components that are attached to the entity and the component order that the entity has. In the dictionary object, we start with the renderer component and declare the image of our entity. The background is the name of the image loaded in our atlas file. Then we need to specify the position value. The size of our output screen is 800 in width and 600 in height. To position our background, we have specified 400 width, 300 height. That is the half of both width and height. Given game engine follows the rule of referencing the positions of object from the center. Then we specify the rotate component. Our image is not rotating, so the value of rotate component is zero. Our, our image is 800 in width and 600 in height. So we do not need to scale it to fit to the output window. So we choose the value one to display the image scaled as it is. Then we specify the color of the entity, which goes red, green, blue, and alpha for the opacity. 255 is the maximum value for all, all of these. And in our component order, we have to specify the component order. Make sure you follow this order, order of systems. On creating an object, the given system automatically assigns an entity ID to the object. Entity ID is very important to change and to play around with the entities and their components. We can print out the entity ID with the print statement using this line of code. Let's run our main.py file and see the output. Our background image is being rendered correctly. It's a clear night sky by the way. Let's add some stars to it. Let's render 50 stars of different sizes at random positions on the screen. We use the for loop and for the positions we generate the random numbers from 0 to, to 800 and on width and on for the height we generate random numbers from 0 to 600. Let's give four different scales to the stars. This draw object function creates background and 50 stars and we call it in the init game function. We can see the output. The draw underscore objects function has rendered the background and 50 stars on top. Let's test the capacity of current game engine and render 1000 stars. One thousand stars of four different sizes are being rendered on random positions. Now we roll back to fifty stars and discuss bookkeeping of entity IDs. 
so that we can play with the components attached to the entities. Normally, the first entity that gets created gets the entity ID of integer 0. We have created 50 stars, so the last star will get the ID of 50. That is an integer. As we introduce more systems, other than the basic systems that we have discussed, the first entity that gets created will get an ID of somewhere above 400. To do a nice bookkeeping of entities and their IDs, I have made this custom function. That makes a dictionary in which keys are the name of the names of the objects and values are their system generated IDs so that we can focus more on the logic. All you have to do is enter the objects from first to last. You can create this list of star 1 to 50 using simple python function. You don't have to do, write it manually. As we enter new systems, we need to print the first object's ID. If it's 0, then we write 0 here. If it's, if it's not 0 and it's 456 because we have introduced more systems, we write 456 here and the rest of the objects will then just get the relevant ID as key value pair. Now that we have assigned IDs to objects names, we can call objects with their names rather than numbers. Let's play around with the entities and change the values of components attached to them. To refer to the entities in the game world, we make this variable entities that is pointing towards the self.gameworld.entities. To refer to the entities in the game world, we make this variable that is entities and it is pointing towards self.gameworld.entities. Okay, let's change the scale of first 10 stars and make them look three times bigger. We make a list and copy the names of star 1 to 10. Then to access the scale component of each star in the list, we run a for loop that changes the scale component value of each star to 3. In this for loop, the self.ent underscore list is the list that gets gener generated in the previous assign custom IDs function that we just have declared. Let's see the output. As you can see, 10 stars are scaled to 3 times more than their actual size. Let's change the color of next 10 stars now. We access the color component of star 11 to star 20 and change their color to just red using the for loop. Let's see the output. The first 10 stars are scaled 3 times bigger. The next 10 stars have color red. For the rest of the 30 stars, let's position them in the center. The last 30 stars, we access the position systems component attached to their entities and position them in the center using the for loop. Let's see the outcome. The rest of the 30 stars are positioned right in the center as expected. Let's see how we can write our own custom system and add its component to the star entities to do some action. But let's see the components of these basic systems that we just have discussed in detail on the given docs. For position system, we have used the position components attribute POS that stands for position. There are, there are X and Y attributes also available. For the rotate component, we just have used R attribute that is available. And for the scale component, we have used the S attribute that scales, scales the object both horizontally and vertically. And for color system, we have used the RGBA attribute. And for the rendering system, we have just used the texture key. There are other attributes to play around as well. 